now reissued, part of the double package. And I'm pleased to say, joining me on the line from uh, California, Mr. Kane Roberts. Insane is the name of my game. I'm like a runaway train right through your door. I still got those lyrics in my head. I can't even believe it. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, how are you? You know, yeah, we're, I'm doing good, actually. I've been doing um, the uh, rock and roll fantasy camp thing, which I had no idea what it was. Right. And I was... Uh, I was uh, staring at a wall one day with my mouth open, and uh, Kip Winger called me and said one of the counselors didn't, you know, c- cut it for some reason. So I went in and did it, and then, you know, suddenly I'm playing with Zach Wilde and Stevie Vai and Bruce Kulick and all these people. I'm going, this is incredible. So <laughs> I've done three of them now, and, uh, you know, i got to say, it's, it's just, it's like, it's really sort of brought a lot of memories back and sort of brought me to, brought me to life a little bit, so it's uh-huh. cool. Well, well, actually, we'll, we'll go back to that in a short while because I can find that quite fascinating. Let's let's talk first about this uh, the unsung radio CD. How how did this package come together, or the idea come together? Well, you know, I I stay in touch with Bruce Me, um, you know, of mm-hmm. uh, Firefest fame, and you know, and you know, pretty certain I'm not doing Firefest again. But those guys put on an amazing show. Yeah, and uh, and. Um, you know, uh, Bruce is just one of those guys, and, and you know the crew that they have there and everything are just sort of way off the charts. I don't know how they pull it off, but but you know, I, I, since before that and since Firefest, I talk to Bruce all the time, uh-huh. and uh, we start saying like, what what else could we do? Are there any tracks sort of laying around? And I, I was thinking to myself, I'm I'm working on some new stuff with uh, with um, Kip uh, Kip Winger and Ken Mary, which is you know it's coming out really good. Uh-huh. But I wanted to have something out in the meantime. So right. I have all these songs that, for one reason or another, you know, never quite made it to the show. So, um, you know, they're, they're full-on studio recordings. A lot of them are real good, really great musicians on them and stuff. So I just decided, you know, I'd, I'd put a CT, CD together with Bruce, and, uh, you know, here we are. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, was, the, was part of the original idea to, to reissue the Phoenix Down album? Yeah, that was the first notion. Because mm-hmm. it never really got um, released um, the first time. It just sort of got, you know, thrown out there a little bit. So uh, what we decided to do was, um, you know, reissue it. And then, then he and I started thinking, you know, we could do we could do a little bit more and add all these, uh, I think it's 11 unheard tracks. Mm-hmm. So previously unheard tracks. So, yeah. So, so, so you get... Started right, off just as a, sorry, after, after you, go on. Well, it started off as just a single reissue. And then we decided to, you know, to double up on it. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, on the uh, on the so on the first the first CD is basically the, the the I presume it's remastered the Phoenix Down Down album. Actually, no. We we put it out. We were pretty happy with the way it sounded. So when we initially mastered it, we uh, Michael Wagner mixed it, and you know we had some great guys working on it mm-hmm. initially. So we we felt there was really no need to do it. I mean. We didn't want to go left or right with it. We wanted to go forward. So right. Okay. We were pretty happy with with the way it was, but it was the all these tracks. I mean, I had to, I had to. It's, it's stuff that I, I worked on with uh, Jim Peterick and um, you know all sorts of uh, Kip Wingers on one of them. He and I uh, put uh, recorded a song with uh, Michael Wagner and Paul Simmons uh, on drums, and mm-hmm. so yeah. So we I just really suddenly got compelled to get this other stuff out there. And then I decided to do something different and, and record commentary on each on each song, or you know most of the songs, and play a little guitar in between the songs. Yeah, and just kind of yeah. you know do something different because you know with all the Facebook stuff and all the way we're communicating and everything, um, it's it's kind of a uh, uh, it's kind of a different world out there. So rather than having these silences between each songs, I decided to. Uh, you know, kind of expose uh, how much of an idiot I am and just like, talk about like, the recordings and what we were doing and stuff. And I even talk about Stevie Nicks' uh, uh, pantyhose, so it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with being, I mean, with like the track we just played, I mean, there's, there's um, that material, I think, was quite a bit heavier than, say, Saints and Sinners, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, that was, you know, it's funny, some of these songs were written right around the same time. Right. Um, you know, that what happened was, uh, we I, ha- I must have had maybe 20 or 30 songs. Some of them I had written um, 
you know, when I was with Alice and, and some of them, you know, right afterwards. And Reckless, uh, I ran into a guy, Mike Slammer, yep. who's one of my favorite guitarists alive. And then it was a bass player, this kid, Jimmy Tabbitt, who has, you know, passed away. But um, he was the one, Jimmy actually called me, and I went in there, and, uh, you know, those guys were, were, the momentum was very heavy, and, and they were, you know, really charging ahead with this song. So... You know, I wrote the lyrics and, and, and sang it and stuff. So, you know, it, I really love that sound, by the way. I'm, I'm really into it. It ended up on that um, Rockstar movie. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yes. And I got to hear Zach Wilde play it. So. <laughs> That's not a bad one, is it? <laughs> no, it's good. He's one of my favorite guitar players. So, so sort of moving forward to the future. Uh, well, actually, no. I will say, say something. Else. The the, um, the little snippets you did on the second CD between each tracks. I mean, that, that certainly yeah, was yeah. a good good approach. Uh, it threw it threw us completely when we actually put the CD on our system. But I, I explained that <laughs> earlier on. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. D- DJs need warning of things like that. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought I I put it on the on the CD cover, but I apologize. Oh no, you probably did. We just don't read. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, will any of those songs, you know, say in the future, will any of those make it into a live set or anything like that? Well, I think what's wrong with me, which you've heard before, that one very well, uh, you know, could could end up uh, in a on a set. And I also there's a, a song, um, there's one ballad called "Blue Highway," but mm-hmm. I mean, you know, our, my approach that I recorded it with uh, um, with Jim Peterick, you know, we, we were at his studio in Chicago and we recorded something like. Ten songs in four days. So you know, I'm singing it, looking at my watch. You know, because I got to catch an airplane. <laughs> but 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 you know, that one might uh, that one might make it. But you know, one step to heaven. I, I bleed for you. Those songs. I think they have enough. Uh, they have enough push that they might be able to you know move an audience live and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, right now, I'm working on uh, you know doing a couple of tours in Brazil, which has right. always been a, a dream of mine. So. You know, I'm really looking forward to that, and, and one of those songs might make it to the set. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, by the way, go on. The next, if I come by and visit you guys, will you give me cookies again? That was really great. <laughs> yes, we, yeah, we're quite good at supplying them. All right, good, good. I, I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> um, so, where do I mean? Where do we go from here? You say you're you're in the process of, of doing a new album. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things. One of, one of the moments that took place, uh, we, were, we were at the MGM Grand uh, for the last Fantasy Camp deal, and suddenly I'm on stage with Rudy Sarzo and Lita Ford and Bruce Kulick and Rod Morgenstein on drums, mm-hmm. and I'm playing, uh, you know, Crazy Train, and I'm thinking, you know, this, this just, it just juiced me up so heavily. I just got so into it, and then Kip and I uh, played um, Schools Out, and it just turned out to be this this amazing experience, and he and I—I I mean, you know—we've been we've been playing for a while, yeah. and we got off the stage literally laughing and slapping each other on the back. So it just we got compelled to just get in the studio. Um, you know, I, I I had to you know drag uh, Ken Mary out of his obscurity. I mean, the guy <laughs> plays drums like crazy every day, yeah. and we decided to do sort of a power trio type of a thing. So. So that's that's developing. We're we're looking on on getting fully medieval on it in in January, and then you know we might do some shows if, if we get we get a chance to as well. So um, so that you know that that's taking place. And then you know one of the camps that's coming up is with Alice Cooper. So you know I'm going to get to play with Alice Cooper again, which it's been like I don't know like 600 years since we did that. So. <laughs> Yes, fun. with those fan- rock and roll fantasy camps, I mean, how does it actually work? I mean, obviously people pay money to get on them, but I mean, it, it must be a bit of a surreal experience for some of the people attending. It, it really is. I mean, like, some of these people, it, it's, it's every cross-section of individual you can imagine. A lot of them are very wealthy people, like CEOs of companies. They fly their own jets out there. Oh, lovely. But at some point in their lives, they were kids with guitars, and... What happened was they decided to go the straight and narrow. Yeah. And then people like me said, you know what, I, I don't want to wake up at 8 in the morning. You know what I mean? I want to I want to do what I, I want to do. I want to, you know, play music. Yeah. So we sort of lived a life while they went to school. And now pretty much, you know, uh, to the man, they're living their life because they're fully wealthy. And we're teaching at a camp. So as the whole thing got reversed <laughs> at the end of the story. But, but um but yeah, so and then they come in there and they we they sort of uh, put 
put everybody together in a band, so a drummer, guitar player, bass player, and then they walk in and, you know, guys that they look at as rock stars or people that they heard listen or influence them, you know, mm -hmm. teach them. And then during the day, somebody like Steve Vai will come in and play with them. And or Zach Wild or Vince Neil came by. Like you know, you hear all these guys being so, you know, badass and tough and <laughs> and rebels and stuff, but they're just they're just so they give so much of their time. Sebastian Bach, you know, yeah. all these people came by and, and uh you know, they really do a service to everybody. The last one we did was with Gene Simmons and you know, I mentioned this on Facebook, but I mean when I walked into the room with my band you know, Gene went, Kane, and I was thinking, you know, I'm still a fanboy to a certain extent. I was like, oh, man, Gene Simmons, dude. So, uh, but he was really great, and he spent a lot of time with the band. He was funny as shit. I mean, he made everybody laugh, and, you know, so it's a great experience. And then at the end of the week, you do a show with your band. So we were right on the casino floor at the MGM in the Grand in, in Vegas, and, you know, we played with these guys, and these guys, you know, it's, it's a great experience. In other words, they respect their creative soul enough to, to lead their quote unquote normal life. Yeah. And, and I think when they go back home, I think, you know, they're bringing something more with them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a great experience. Hmm. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to fly out and have check one of these out. <laughs> Dude, we'd love to have you out there. <laughs> it sounds like a wicked idea to me. Right. The unsung yeah. radio CD is out on the Firefest label. And obviously people can order it from, uh, the Firefest website. Um, are you selling it out in the st in the states off your own website? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start getting that together. We're printing them out up here first, but I, I don't want to do anything until you know we get them printed up. And there's a few uh, distribution outlets, kind of the you know guys like AOR Heaven, mm -hmm. NEH Records, and you know things like that. That you know they're they're gonna be uh, selling them on their website as well. So. You know, it's kind of a cool deal. It, it's exciting for me to just, you know, put something together. And, I, you know, what I wanted to do is I had the Saints and Sinners reissue come out. That one was remastered. Yep. We had four extra cuts on that. And then this one, and then I'm going to follow it up with, with a, a CD of brand new material. So it'll be kind of a, a, a fun year that way. Excellent stuff. Thank you for taking time out to join us. Don't forget, folks, you can get it now from the firefestofficial.com. Um, CDs are ready to ship, so get your order in. And uh, we're going to play out with um, a track from the second CD, aren't we? This one's called One Step to Heaven. Yeah, it's uh, One Step to Heaven. And, and, you know, as you can see on the CD, um, I, I was uh, one of, well, I did all my commentary and guitar playing, the extra bits on my iPhone. So, you know, I pulled my car over. I was in Sunset Boulevard because I drove by, uh, you know, one of the clubs there, the Rainbow, and it just reminded me of that era. And... Mm -hmm. uh, this was one of those songs where um, I'd spent an all-nighter the night before we went into the studio. And uh, it just, you know, I just uh, all those thoughts came back, and I thought about how, you know, you can change your life in, in, 